right to get started so you can get all the information possible from our First of all, Nan, who is going to talk about workplace culture, and that's something that's of interest to all of you. So, Rick is the owner of Balzan HR. Rick is a results-driven leader with extensive involvement in the management of human resources. His professional career includes work at both small and large companies in the diversity of industries such as service, manufacturing, and healthcare. Rick is also an experienced educator, teaching for Silver Lake College, as well as outreach programs at the Univers University of Wisconsin Milwaukee and Lakeshore Technical College. Rick holds a Master's of Science degree in Management and Organizational Behavior from Silver Lake College and a Bachelor's of Science degree in Human Resource Development Management, also from Silver Lake College. So please join me in welcoming Rick Holzman. If I'm not speaking loud enough, just let me know and I'll increase the volume a little bit. Thank you for coming. Nice outside, nice and warm, perfect day to get out. Glad you all showed up. Have to have your heads examined, but other than that. Uh, we're going to go through today workplace culture. I, I don't read a lot to people off the slides, but there are a couple things I'm going to nail the first two slides down just so we can get an overview. Uh, and then we'll get into a little bit more on how this subject came about. I was contacted by a person on one of the chamber committees, and uh, she just asked, would you be interested in doing that? And how ironic that I was teaching at Silver Lake College the day that she told me that, and it was in a strategic management class. And guess what the subject was for that <laughs> night? <laughs> Workplace culture. And so it was very interesting, because then I got to pick the brain of the students that night. And that was most enjoyable, because sometimes you come in and you read the book, you go, oh gosh, here we go again. And I never like having the nights for, oh, here we go again. So I always try to change that up anyways. But today I said, hey, you could actually help me with something that I'm going to have to do in another month and a half or whatever it was. So we had a good time with it. So let's take a brief look at workplace culture. Again, I hate reading, but here we go. A shared belief system of values, processes within an organization. So, you know, we take a look at the walls, mission statements, value statements, etc. Do we live them? Do we preach them? What do we think about them? Again, it starts from the top. And we're going to get into all this a little more in depth, but just like I said, I want to bust through these first few slides. The key features of a workplace culture. The values, business principles, ethical standards that management preach and practices. Notice that's italicized. Do we really practice what we preach when it comes to leadership and workplace man and uh, workplace culture? Uh, remember, actions do speak louder than words. Now, how are corporate and workplace cultures different? Here's what happened. Why I wanted to buzz through the first two slides. I got a call from the person. They didn't tell me workplace culture in the beginning. They said, "Can you talk about corporate culture?" And I went, "Sure." Because I knew that is what the chapter was that it would be. And I went, oh, piece of cake, you know, get some of this. And I've been doing this balls in HR for eight years. So I've been with enough smaller, mid sized even a couple large companies, to get a good flavor of how they're run and what they see in culture, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, sure, no problem. And then all of a sudden, the email came and it said, workplace culture. And I went, oh, that's a little different. Or is it? To my shock, I went online, and I, oh wait, let's go back. I went online to find out what corporate culture was and workplace culture. And you know what? They don't differentiate between the two. So, back to Silver Lake and my students that evening. I went into the class, and I was able to look at some of this stuff pretty quickly, and I said to them, I go, you know, I have to do a talk on workplace culture tonight, we're starting corporate culture. I said, don't even open up your books. What's the difference? And they came across with the same, give or take a little, same type of definition as I did. And I said, you know, the workplace culture is what's really happening out on the floor, within the departments, whatever the case may be. The corporate culture, we came to believe, is what do we have posted on the wall? What do we say we're doing? What is hopefully is upper management saying that's going on? 
Okay? So often, and then there were 19 in the class, by the way. 19 students, which is large for one of those classes. I'm going, oh my gosh. Uh, and the worst part, correcting papers. <laughs> Two a week for 19 people. That's there. I just don't have time for that, but I made time for that. But what ended up happening, all of a sudden, the class directed itself almost for the entire evening. We covered the few things we needed to cover, and I said, you know, the floor is yours. Just let me sit here and facilitate. They were going back and forth, and I could not believe. It just amazed me, because I've seen it. I'll give you a couple examples where I've seen things like this happen. I could not believe it, but what ended up happening was they were really ripping the places that they were. <laughs> and, and should that maybe surprise everyone? They were going, you, you know, here's what we say is going on. And, and then they, of course, everybody comes to class now with notepads or tablets or uh, their um, laptops. So they start bringing up their, listen, listen. Here's our corporate culture. And they started reading their mission, vision, and value statements, and whatever the case may be. And they go, that's not what's going on there. And I said, why not? We don't hear anything. They don't communicate to us, blah, blah, blah. You can imagine what it turned into. But it was very interesting. But then, you know, like five minutes into that, you have to do a timeout and say, okay, remember, what's said here stays here. <laughs> we don't care who you work for. <laughs> but let's address some of these issues, and let's see what we can constructively do, because a lot of them in class, uh, I do the nighttime classes a lot, so a lot of them is uh, adults returning to work, adults returning to the workplace. So uh, a lot of them had supervisory leadership type roles already, and they're just going to the bachelor's degree now. So I'm going, you know, uh, you can formulate some ideas tonight in order to take them back to the company and share with them what really should be going on and see if it matches where you're at. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And again, what surprised us, though, and surprised you, when we did not come up with those same, when we didn't come up with different definitions for those two statements, because I thought for sure, well, workplace culture, what's going on, and what they think is going on, they didn't work. So let's take a look at a few different cultures. I sort of just mixed and matched and typed them down at will, because you know what? Some of these are going to be very favorable to us when we look at them and go, oh, wow, that's really neat. And some are going to be, oh gosh, I wouldn't want to work in that place with that type of culture, etc. Yet, are there any really wrong? Quick example, and I've decided to use companies that do not belong to our chamber or are not from our community. <laughs> so, I have a client in a town south of here. <laughs> and what ended up happening, just to give you an idea, uh, I knew the sales rep from there, I was in some committees with him and whatnot. And, uh, he said to me, he says, I'd really like to bring you down and introduce you to the president of our company because I really think we need help. I, I never liked hearing that when somebody thinks they really need help. So they said, I really think we need some help. And I said, yeah, I'll gladly come down and talk to him and see what's up. First of all, very profitable company. Uh, they're in a good industry. The industry's changing, though, and we have to be open to change. We'll get to that in a little while, too. But... Uh, and very low turnover. So I was expecting great things, right? So I walk into this company, and the gentleman wasn't ready to see me yet. The salesman was busy, I was going to introduce me, and the boss was busy too. So in come came the gentleman from Packerland, the people that bring the mats, that you know, roll up by the door, right? And this gentleman comes out, all dressed up in a suit, he goes, okay, yeah, that's fine, but I'd like you to just turn the mat a little bit this way. Now this is the guy delivering the mats and whatnot, and I'm like, oh, okay, gosh, I wonder who that is. Well, lo and behold, it's the president. So I went, hmm, that's a little strange that he'd be in charge of the mats. <laughs> so I thought, well, what's going to happen now? So uh, the time came, and he came out and shook my hand, very businesslike, very straight and to the point, and, and that's all fine. You know, you have to be able to adapt to different types of people, and that's great. So he shook my hand, and what ended up happening, he says, let me give you a tour of our facility. And he's very proud of it. He had some new machinery in there. It looked great, and the place was spotless, and they were turning out product like... And uh, the stuff was very professionally done, and it was just an excellent product. And they've been in place for a long time. And I went, wow, this is all right. So, but being an HR guy, oh, and we forgot one part. Karen, I'm glad you didn't start with this, but I ran a tavern for 12 years, too. <laughs> so you can really pick up on personalities, maybe just a little quicker than other people. So I'm watching this guy. So right away, I don't tune into the machine. I mean, here's the machine. I'm watching the employees, right? HR background, ran a tavern. Hey, what are the rest of the people like here? 
kind of, whenever the boss would walk towards them, their heads would go down. He never greeted them. Isn't this a great product that this machine is turning out? Hmm. Not the person running the machine, the machine turning out. And I'm just going, wow, I wonder. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, this is only our first stop, and we have a whole plan to go through. Same thing. Whenever he got near the person, not only when he never said good morning to them, and I'm saying hi to everybody because it's just a polite thing to do, and, and it sort of caught them all off guard. And well, wow, this is great. So we had a brief talk, and he shared some of the concerns he had, and we just chit chatted back and forth, and maybe some resolutions of what he should consider and whatnot. And he says, you know, I'll get back to you in a week and let you know if there's some services you can maybe provide them. Great, no problem. So the sales guy pulled me in the office after, and I said to him, I said, I can't work here. <laughs> I said, no, thank you. And he said, what? And I said, you got to be kidding. I said, how come the turnover rate's so low? He says, he pays people very well. <laughs> and I went, okay. So now, some of the examples I gave you, you probably go, gosh, I wouldn't be able to work in a place like that. But maybe what's wrong with that culture? It may be nothing. Because there are people that can work in different types of environments, and they're fine with it. You know what? Just tell me my job. Tell me what to do. I, you don't need any of my creativity, because you know what? I don't have any. <laughs> but that's OK. And we'll get the job done. We'll be able to work together. So today, when we're talking about some of these things, there's no right or wrong in any of this. But what fits and what's maybe working, what's maybe not working, what changes can be done. But to a certain extent, it's almost all OK. Just like the third grader that comes home with his participation trophy, and you think that the person uh, won Wimbledon or something. You know, it's all okay today. So take a look at some of these different types of cultures. You know, methodical, all business-like. That's what that gentleman sort of company was like. And he was a micro, well, he was safety, he's taking care of the carpeting that's coming in the morning. He's a little mats. He's a micromanager. Vibrant and fun. What kind of companies do we think of when we think of vibrant and fun? Google. Thank you. They were in the news again today. Everybody wants to work at Google, so I kept it on to see what they were talking about. Um, I know a person who left Google about six months ago, so we'll get to that in a moment, too. Uh, tense and hairy. You know what? Um, even in an environment like a Google, where they, they make sure they have their downtime, they make sure they have fun, and yet it's tense and hairy as well. So it's a combination of the two. Highly competitive and politicized. Um, believe it or not, Part of that, from what I heard from the gentleman who left, is Google. I have a competitor, makes sense, but politicized as well, so it's sort of interesting. Um, are we excited about our work? Or are they there to get a paycheck? And that's fine. The company down in the city south of Manitowoc, <laughs> they were there to get a paycheck. And, and for them, that was okay. And they had probably the per perfect boss for them. Vast majority in this room is that person would drive you nuts, but for them, it worked. How do employees and leadership interact? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Empowered creativity, open communication, teamwork. Oh, I'm glad I remember to put open communication there. I forgot to start it out today. Whenever I do a seminar, whenever I'm teaching a class, whatever, I always start out with there's nothing more important than quality communication and documentation. Because again, being in HR, Boy, you run into the documentation so hard to do, yet it doesn't have to be, you don't have to write the Bible about it. It doesn't have to be a long dissertation. It just needs to be some comments. But there's nothing more important than that. Uh, uh, the work I do in the eight years that I've been on my own doing this, it all boils down to the communication and mostly documentation to it. Communication all the time if they just learn to talk to one another. Hence, when you're talking about corporate culture or workplace culture, it's the same type of thing. As long as people would talk, it would be interesting. It's, it would just work better. A um, little discretion on how jobs are done. You know, are you the micromanager? Are you the person that lets them do their work? Promote interacting outside of work. Uh, I get a lot of my material from my son. My son's been very fortunate as far as well. He's always been a good student. And you know, when kids are in high school, you always pray that they'll continue to be good students and find a job and do well. And the teachers kept saying, don't worry, he'll be fine. I went, oh, I hope so. Because he, he has a very good right brain, left brain kind of thing. Great with numbers, great with all that. And yet, he likes putting on plays and doing things like that as well. So he, he has both of them going from good, just utilizing the right way. 
to make a long story short, he's with Cor uh, Corporate Target up in Mass. Another wonderful place to work. And just some of the things that they do is just amazing. And uh, promote interacting outside of work. During work, three out of the five days you have to have lunch with your team. And they set little buffets up like right within your cubicles, like they have one row empty and they just do things there. And they'll play games during their break, whatnot. Once a month, just to show you interacting outside because they want to, he called me one day. I'm moved by the story. He called me one day last year. He's only been there two and a half years. Last year he says, you'll never guess where I am. And I looked, it's a Friday at two in the afternoon. I went, hopefully at work. <laughs> and he goes, well, sort of. And I said, he said, are you familiar with the, um, oh, which was about, doesn't matter which one it was. Oh, Brits. Are you familiar with Brits? I went, well, that's the bar right across the street from Corporate Target. Yeah, I'm sitting here. <laughs> and I went, do I want to ask why? <laughs> and he said, yeah, he said, I was in charge of the um, team building exercise today. And I went, oh. Okay. And he says, this is dead of winter, and they have downtown Minneapolis connected with those skywalks. And he said, so they have to do a scavenger hunt through the stores with the skywalks. I went, okay. And then he says, and they have to check in with me at the end of the day, and they have to be here by 4.30, so I made sure I got here early. He said, I was really good doing it. I said, just don't drink too much. And he says, yeah, the boss even said I can have as much beer as I want. I said, don't believe me as much heart. <laughs> But it just showed the interaction and things they do. Then once a month, they'll also volunteer for an organization, be it Big Brothers Big Sisters, be it a food pantry, be it things going overseas to the military, whatever the case may be. They break at, it's usually two to three hours if they volunteer, they're paid for the rest of the day, and then the company takes them out to do something. You know, go ahead, Doug, head to the bar, go to the beach and do something, whatever the case may be. But just sort of neat, the interaction. So just some definitions as far as how that relates. Workplace culture, strong and weak. Now, the here, we're going to have more truth in the pudding. Uh, strong, the founder or strong leader who establishes the core values, principles, practices, and contributes to the company's success. Throw some out. Who do we think of when we think of that? Steve Jobs. Okay. Howard Schultz. Okay. Good. Stop it. Anybody more local? Who's no longer with us? Northeast Wisconsin, let's go that way. We were very disappointed in them just a week and a half ago. Oh, Golden Girls, the dairy? That's good. I was thinking more of Vince Lombardi, but hey, Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the other answer. <laughs> um, take a look at Vince Lombardi and what he's done for the past. I, I, I'm sure Curly Lambo had something to do with it too, but when you think back to the leaders from long ago, what type of media did we have in order to have things remembered the way they are today? You're not now at tweet or tweet or, uh, Twitter and Facebook and everything else involved. We remember things are more uh, action market. What did they do at the new remodeled Lambeau Field in honor of Vince Lombardi? Anybody know? Outside looking at the... Exactly. The clock. What did they do? You can talk. I can't remember what exactly. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. It's set ahead because his on time was 15 minutes early. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now look at there's something that was mentioned how long ago and it still sticks and it still resonates today. And then take a look at the type of coaches you maybe bring on board. Not to say they were all great, right, but a lot of them, you know, the stoic, established kind of coach. I'm sure you won't see the coach from the Seahawks coach and the Packers now. It's just not that type of personality, that type of persona, that type of history involved, where you bring the McCarthy who bores you to death during his news <laughs> broadcast and his TV show and very straight ladies to the point and, hey, he smiled this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, it's that type of culture. It's that type of buy-in. Um, their general manager, Mark Murphy, he does that. He has that same type of buy-in now, this, uh, too, is that type of belief. A sincere, long-standing company commitment to operating the business according to these acts, traditions, and values. You know, it, it doesn't vary. It changes. It doesn't change. Uh, things may be tweaked. You have to move along with the times, and things change that way, but it's still that tradition. Another company in town that I was thinking about, I'll never forget this. This is back to when I was running the tavern. You know how guys come in a bar and they always complain when somebody has more money than they have, or how can this guy does that? And, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. One of my bartenders was an old... Uh, he was an employee at Miro for years. 
And he was my morning guy that took care of all these old timers. I'll never forget, one day I was there doing some cleaning or that, and he talked to some guys in the bar. And who are they complaining about but one of the uh, best philanthropists in the area, probably, with what's carried on, but John West. Okay. And uh, what ended up happening, uh, they were complaining about John West. Oh, and just because, oh, look at that money, and look at the kind of things they give it to. You know, and the tavern people will think about anything to complain about. So you have to let that part go in one ear and out the other. But what ended up happening, I, I took a look at the bartender, I said, well, I'm never going to forget that. And I talked to him a little bit after. He says, he goes, you know what? I could have sold, I could have had half that property where they were building, this is how long ago this was, when they were building out on the south side of town. But no, I spent too much money drinking my weekends away <laughs> instead of investing like he did. So he was the smart one. I'm the dumb, and then he used another word. <laughs> That's sitting here behind the bar when I'm supposed to be retired. <laughs> I said, better than sitting in front of the bar when you're supposed to be retired. <laughs> A weak workplace slash corporate culture. Um, lacks values and principles that are consistently preached and widely shared. So... Do people, again, practice what they preach? So often, according to my students, and according to what I've seen in some companies, you don't hear that. You don't see that. It's, a, it's the flavor of the day. They'll grab the latest business magazine. I have one client that I'm working with now, and it's just awesome. I walked in, and I'm like, wow, he read the same book I did. Because he's going through all these quotes and cliches and what he wants to do. And I'm going, that's great. And then when he left the room, I said to the person who I first met and had to work hand in hand with this job, and I just said, uh, boy, very innovative. I said, is that really going on here? And she went, no. <laughs> she didn't even have to think about it. No, not really. He's really trying to get it to that place, but it's a small company. And you know, you're not going to use Starbucks book on how to run a company when you have 10 employees. And, you know, it's, it's something that's going to transfer. And he's trying to put it all in the place, and he's just all over the board, so we have to get him focused and structured. Reads no strong employee allegiance to what the company stands for or to operating the business. Um, just to give you an idea of the kind of client you're working with, too. Sometimes perceptions out there. I had a gentleman one time, he called me, he just asked me to assist him in some hiring. Or no, assist, assist me in some firing, excuse me. <laughs> Phone ring. Also in HR, he goes, uh, yeah, are you Rick? I went, yes, I am. And he goes, uh, I heard you can fire people. <laughs> and I went, mm, maybe. <laughs> and he said, maybe. I said, well, well give, give me a background. He says, oh, this guy hasn't been working well for us. We want to get rid of him, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, uh, well, I said, you know, we should probably talk about this. It's Friday. You wouldn't want to fire somebody on a Friday anyways. And he goes, oh, okay. So I said, uh, <coughs> I said, give some thought and let's talk on money, but here's what I want you to think about. <coughs> Do you believe that, uh, I said, if you fired this person today, would he be surprised? And he went, yeah. And I, but you just told me how bad he was. Right? Didn't he ever hear that? No, I just sort of let him flounder out there. And now it's time to let him go. No, no you know, I don't. I, and here's the company. I said, you know, this company had a good reputation. I heard of them. They were well respected for what they did, et cetera, et cetera. I said, so you know, it only takes one bad move in order to, he said, what do you suggest? And I said, well, what I'd suggest was you talk to the person and you coach them and see how things go. And I said, one of three things will happen. You're going to end up with a, in the end of, say, three weeks, a month, whatever it takes, two weeks. I said, you're going to end up with one, a good employee. You're going to end up with an employee that moved on on his own because he can't believe he can do it. Or you're going to have to dismiss the employee, but at least they're not going to be surprised because you're going to work through it and talk to them, et cetera, and it's going to be fine. He goes, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And I said, so I'll call you back on Monday and you let me know what you think. So I call him back Monday. He goes, hey, this is Rick. He goes, oh, how are you doing? I said, you have a good weekend? He says, yeah, I had a great weekend. I said, why is that? He gave a lot of thought to what I said. He goes, no, no, I fired the guy on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> Provide no or little assistance in executing the strategy because of the lack of tradition and history. And, and again, uh, you have to start that. I've been with companies where certain things are just embedded. Uh, I, when Karen did the introduction, I worked in healthcare for a while for HR. 
I worked at Shermake Sausage Company when we were still home with the Lambeau Field hot dog. You know, we're not anymore, but everybody still thinks of it that way. Greatest marketing tool and change we made, you know. Dump it, but it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, a group called Alderwoods. We own funeral homes and cemeteries throughout the U.S., Canada, and Great Britain. So, yes, I was in the death care industry. Isn't that an oxymoron? Death care. Uh, but, but what you found out in a group like Alderwoods, primarily when you're dealing with people that are in their time of need and during difficult times, they constantly, constantly stressed, stressed and lived a strong mission, vision, value, customer first, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they really did a nice job at doing what they were doing. And uh, it was just, it was a pleasure to work with them and they treated people right. So it was just a neat thing, neat thing. Rick, can I ask a question? Sure. Because I don't want to forget it. You just got done saying previously about you don't want to fire somebody on Friday. Yeah. I'm dying to know why you believe oh, you don't want to fire somebody on Friday. And that's sort of old hat. Because here's what happened. When you used to fire on Friday, oh my gosh, you go through all the emotions just like you do in a death. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you lost your job, everything else. But what ends up happening is you can't get to the unemployment office then because it's closed over the weekend. So then you're... Now you can do it online, but there's a lot of people that aren't computer literate, etc. So you just avoid Friday because you want them to have some time that they can contact somebody in a day or two if there's something that needs to be done or it's on their mind instead so of your business being closed. And for the workplace, for the remainder of the people there, is that. Um, oh, yeah. Because then the phones start ringing and they start bad mouthing and talking. And it, I've always been, you know who needs to know. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so you, know, you, you have to have open communication again and just share with people what you can share. When you talk about a corporate culture, though, let's bring up somebody who Karen mentioned to me earlier today and these friends of both of ours, and a lot of you know him, but Father Dan Felton. Take a look at what Manitowoc had to do when he came in to develop a corporate culture and a culture that was going to involve a lot of change. I was counting them this morning, and I thought there were... I came up with seven, but St. Boniface was closed already. So we had six parishes that went down to one with three sites. Well, needless to say, everybody has their way of doing things. Everybody has their customs, their beliefs, etc. yet a change need to be done financially. So look how... Here's a good example to give you as far as that communication documentation. And especially if you're a leader in your group, and you're having meetings, and how often do we get meeting to death? We're going to have a slide on that minute. And yet nothing gets done. So often, you just keep on spinning your wheels. When I was on committees at the church, it was precise meetings, timely. When you left, what have we covered? A brief synopsis. Who needs to do what? Now, before we leave this room, here's one of the neatest things we ever do. And there are major decisions that you know, certain groups had to do, but other people obviously are always involved. You have to touch base with people in certain order before it comes out to the public, whatever it might be. Before we leave the room, he'd always say, okay, who needs to know what before we leave this room? And I have used that so much. So I learned that from him. Because you're going to leave the room and you go, that's right, who needs to know what? So you don't offend people, you may need some assistance in getting something done that was on the agenda, whatever it could be, but who needs to know what before we leave this room? And if so many leaders would do that and then follow through on it, you'd have wonderful workplace or corporate culture, whatever you want to call it. Changing a workplace culture. Anybody know what that is? Acuity. 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 And heritage. Who said heritage? I went there. Good for you. I went there. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I can sit down. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Say it. Go ahead. Be honest. Because they've changed tremendously. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you experience? Oh, it was, a, sure. it, it was the cattle in, cattle out. We had assigned times we could leave our desks. Um, you could not have anything on your desk, family photos, nothing personal. Um, the way they even had us leave at night was there was one driveway into this parking lot of, you know, how many stalls. So it was specifically set up to make sure people stayed because they didn't want to get in a traffic jam when they left work. So people would stay and, you know, work extra and, and you'd have people trickling out. But um, 
or many, many stories. They make us stay late at night for no reason just to drill it into us that you, you needed to be able to, you know, you, you have to accept that you may have to stay here late some nights, so we're just going to stay here till 6 o'clock even though we don't have anything to do. I mean, it was just, yeah. <laughs> it was an interesting place. So, so in your eyes, it really wasn't a positive oh, no. workplace culture. Okay. It, it looked like a prison at that time. Yes. That's 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 yeah. 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 And I can't even remember the CEO, what was his name, Heritage, the guy that was running the place. It all came, trickled straight down from him. You, you, you knew that. I mean, everybody else just did exactly what he said, or they weren't going to be there. So it was, uh, yeah. And now they have a sign on it. I was down there just this past week. I can't recall who said, but they were kind of the top. Top place to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah by whomever named it. I know they didn't hit Forbes this year, which I found interesting. Or maybe it was just a different, maybe Forbes only did the top with so many employees or size or something, I can't recall. But um, yeah, they were one of the top places to work always now. So a complete turnaround, and a complete turnaround within, now don't hold me to this, but I'm guessing around, I think it was less than five years. Yeah, yeah. It went really it quickly. Really quick. And uh, yeah, um, an administrative assistant who worked with us when I was in healthcare, her husband retired from Heritage, and oh, he couldn't wait to get out the door. Like 35, 40 years, I think. Mean. He was there, he was a lifer. Wow. Yeah, wow. And, and yet he lasted. So you know, that environment might have been fine for certain people too, but probably not the majority. So they turn around, and my kids still can't figure out why you don't get to see it on here, but why they have the big Christmas tree ornament <laughs> also. <laughs> But a complete turnaround. I was fortunate. One thing here, one thing here to show uh, One thing Acuity does is for Silver Lake College, when students have to do uh, a publicly held company, blah blah blah, they have to do research and do uh, presentations and whatnot. And Acuity always opens their doors to the students to come and use them. So I've heard tons of Acuity, and it's just interesting to save them all and then hear how well, the next one's going to change. Where are they usually go? They're all pretty much the same because the same people I think walk you through. But give you an example of uh, the open door kind of policies. The policies where, and Target has this too, they talk about, we're going to get into what people are looking for now with this younger generation per se, and whatever we want to call them. Uh,